some of the taller apartment buildings you'll hear about in the media. They're typically done by development agreement, which is a contract between an applicant, the developer, and the municipality. And within those development agreement contracts, staff are able to specify certain rules, whether it might be for density or for the number of parking spaces that might go with the project. Those development agreement restrictions will stay. So sometimes they can put provisions in the DAs that override the bylaw because they're specific to a certain kind of development. That restriction is going to remain as well, that ability. And also there is uh, institution and nonprofit exemptions. Those are not proposed to change either. There's been some exemptions, and the development officers present today can kind of elaborate on that once we have a discussion after this presentation. Generally, I'll just touch on that for a second. The institutional and nonprofit uses. Think of schools and churches. Those are the ones that might want to use the temporary signs to get their community events across to the greater neighborhood. So, not so like a not-for-profit group, for instance, we use the mobile signs for the fall fair, yep. and we use them for like two to three weeks before the event. Would we pay for that? Yeah. Can I ask you, Carol, just let me do one more slide? Sure. Then I'm going to be done, and then we can address your question, and we'll open up the floor for a whole bunch sure. of things. Thank you. Next steps. This is where I, where I come in here. You'll, you'll notice in the next 20 minutes, I'm not the technical expert on this stuff. I'm the planner leading the process, bringing the report to council. That's why it's good to have the other staff in the room here who are the experts in, in issuing the licenses and the permits and the technicalities of how you get those permits. But what we're going to do, though, from a process perspective, is take into consideration, as I mentioned, your comments, all the other consultations that we've done. I think you guys are actually, I have additional stakeholder consultation. You're actually the last ones to finish up, and then, as I mentioned, the many of the meetings that we had. So after today's meeting, we're going to start to finalize the amendments and pull the report together, go back to council and have a discussion with them at a forum that they call Committee of the Whole. So it's not a regional council meeting. It's more of an afternoon meeting, typically, where they'll have uh, more of an open discussion before they go in front of the cameras. They might send us back for further uh, discussion after we discuss with them before we bring it forward to regional council. If it gets to regional council, the next thing if council wants to move it forward is they'll advertise for a public hearing. You'll see that in the Chronicle Herald at least two weeks before that meeting occurs. And the last thing, my contact information, I also have business cards, which I'll put in a pile at the back table there for you, as well as Andrew Faulkner, who I introduced at the beginning of the meeting, uh, because Andrew is your development officer for issuing the licenses and permits for the three bids. So that's it. Um, I've got graphic there, which I'm sure we're going to talk about a little bit regarding sandwich uh, boards. <coughs> and I'll conclude there and we'll have a discussion about Carl's question. And then we're going to open up the floor and all I'd ask is just raise your hand, I'll acknowledge you and we'll try to address your questions as best we can. Thank you. Okay, Carl, do you want to reiterate what you said again, please? 